I'm PK along with Dr. Nathan Unruh for Sidecar. Today, Dr. Nathan Unruh and I are going to talk for a moment about eagles. This is a great analogy, and it's a great story. Uh, I love eagles, too. I love how majestic they are and yes. and how huge they are. You you can't even imagine until you're close up how big these birds are. They're, aren't they amazing? They're regal. I love that them. They are. Yeah. Well, this is a story you know I heard from a gentleman by the name of T.D. Jakes. It's a great story. And so I, let me go through it. As, you know, a little boy wanted to see an eagle fly. He put some sandwiches in his backpack got his binoculars, and set out on the plane, saying, I'm going out there to see the eagles fly. The sky was vast and seemed to stretch out forever like an endless blue blanket, but no birds were anywhere in flight. Then in the distance, he spotted wings. No, what he saw was a hawk. After a long wait, another bird came into view, and he grabbed his binoculars, only to discover a big disappointment. It was a pigeon. He was about to head home, dejected, when far, far above his head, he spied it. Yes, aha, it was an eagle. As magnificent creature soared into the boy's view, he was awestruck. The boy had learned about eagles in school, but nothing had prepared him for the sighting of a real eagle. When the eagle spread his wings from tip to tip, it was eight to nine feet long. The eagle can see two to three miles away. His vision is that keen. The eagle soars at heights where other birds are not able to breathe. The eagle operates at the highest level. When the eagle spread its wings, it uses the wind to increase its velocity. So the greater the storm, the higher the eagle flies. For the storm pushes the eagle higher and higher into the air. Mesmerized, the little boy watched the winged wonder ascend, circle, glide, and maneuver. Suddenly, the eagle swooped down to the ground like a torpedo. He snatched something and took it back into the air. The boy couldn't see what it was. The eagle went higher and higher and higher and then stopped. The eagle appeared suspended in midair as if it had been shot. Now the eagle was falling as the little boy looked on, confused. This time, the lion of flying creatures was not diving down with aim or focus. It was plummeting, flapping, falling, flapping, and falling. Finally, it disappeared from sight. He had to walk a couple of miles to find the eagle. But when he did, there lay nine feet of wings stretched out, helpless. The eagle was lying down, nose in the dirt. It was dead. The boy kneeled next to the eagle and sobbed. What killed the eagle? Cautiously, he turned the eagle over. There affixed to the great bird's chest was a weasel, one of the lowliest of common ground critters. The ordinary weasel had bitten through the regal chest into the heart of the eagle. The boy thought. He picked up something he wouldn't let go of. Then he cried, Eagle, you were stronger than that weasel. The weasel could never hurt you if you didn't pick it up and hold on. In the course of flight, if you don't drop some things, you'll come crashing down like the eagle. Have you picked up some bad habits? Have I picked up some bad habits? Some less than ideal companions? Something that's eating at you? Have you picked up something that is stopping you from living your life to the fullest? Blocking you from scaling to heights unknown and preventing you from doing what you were created to do? If you don't drop it, it'll bring you down. You are an eagle. We are all eagles. We were built to fly. Drop the weasel. Hurry up and drop the weasel before it eats the heart out of your thinking. Isn't that a great story? That is just a powerful, powerful story from T.D. Jakes. You can just visualize that, too, and I just can't imagine that uh, something, again, so huge and strong and powerful like an eagle wouldn't realize just to to let go of that weasel. You know, let go of the thing that's that's really killing him. Absolutely. For me, as I read that story, is looking at what are those things in my life right now? What are those weasels that we've picked up and we're holding on to, holding on to personally? The 20 pounds we've been saying we're going to lose. Mm -hmm. The debt we want to get paid off. How about the systems within our office that we say we're going to change, but we just keep talking about them or the things we're unwilling to to get rid of that we know in the back of our head and our hearts of hearts, it's holding us back and holding our business and holding our lives to going to the next level. It's a great analogy. I think that's a good call to action for all of us this morning as we're thinking about those things that are holding us back, like you said, Dr. Unruh. And I love that it's a weasel because that just kind of puts a whole different kind of picture in my mind, too. It's a weasel 